In the icy fjords of Scandinavia, ancient burial mounds lie silent. Their stones, blackened by time, hide stories that no saga ever dared to tell. Thousands of kilometers away, under the scorching sun of the Indian subcontinent, forgotten ruins whisper secrets through cracked stone carvings. Two worlds. No connection. Or so we believed. But now, something unimaginable has emerged. A piece of DNA extracted from a Viking warrior's tooth is rewriting everything we thought we knew. Not from Europe, not from the North, but a genetic trace leading directly to ancient India. Scientists were baffled, historians stunned. How could a Viking carry Indian DNA? Who crossed the oceans and why? Was there a forgotten route between the Norse and the East? And more importantly, what were they hiding? This isn't just a historical twist. It's a genetic time bomb that could dismantle centuries of accepted history. Today, we dig into a discovery so explosive it might finally reveal a forgotten link. Between India and the Vikings, the Viking Age, spanning roughly from 793 to 1066 AD, is a saga of longships, icy raids, and warriors with iron axes. These Norse seafarers carved their legacy across Europe, from the British Isles to the rivers of Russia. They were fierce, strategic, and above all, isolated from the civilizations of the Far East. Or so history told us. Meanwhile, in the Indian subcontinent, empires like the Cholas and the Rashtrakutas thrived. Masters of trade, philosophy, and oceanic navigation, they commanded the seas of the Indian Ocean. But they had no known contact with the Norse world. No texts, no maps, no voyages recorded across that colossal divide of over 6,000 kilometers. And yet, the DNA found in a Viking grave in Sweden, dated to around the 10th century, contains mitochondrial markers exclusive to ancient Indian populations. This is not coincidence. It's a crack in the historical wall, a hint that someone, somewhere, crossed paths long before Columbus or da Gama. But who and how? This discovery doesn't just raise eyebrows. It threatens to tear open the very fabric of what we thought we knew about global contact in the ancient world. It began, as many breakthroughs do, with a routine excavation. In 2022, a team of archaeologists from Uppsala University unearthed a previously undisturbed Viking burial near Burka, one of Scandinavia's most important trading hubs during the 10th century. The site had been mapped and examined before, but this grave, unmarked, shallow, overlooked, was different. Inside, they found the remains of a male warrior, buried with his sword, shield, and a silver ring etched with symbols not seen before in Viking iconography. But it wasn't the artifacts that caught the team's attention. It was the condition of the teeth. Perfectly preserved molars, ideal for DNA extraction. A sample was taken, catalogued, and sent to a genetic lab for standard sequencing. No one expected what came next. As the data streamed in, an anomaly appeared. A segment of mitochondrial DNA, a maternal lineage, didn't match any known Scandinavian markers. In fact, it didn't match anything European. The sequence aligned instead with haplogroups native to South Asia, specifically to a region in southern India once ruled by the Chola dynasty. At first, the team thought it was contamination, a lab error. But repeated tests confirmed it. A Viking warrior with a genetic trace from ancient India, a link no one could explain. The discovery sent shockwaves through the academic world. Was it possible that a Viking warrior carried Indian ancestry? Immediately, a multidisciplinary team was assembled. Geneticists, historians, maritime archaeologists. Their mission, trace the genetic thread through history, and understand how a South Asian lineage ended up in Viking bones. First, 
Contamination was ruled out through independent lab verification in three countries. Then came the comparative studies. The mitochondrial haplogroup in question, M52, is extremely rare in Europe, but common among Dravidian populations in Tamil Nadu and Sri Lanka. Even more intriguing, isotopic analysis of the man's bones showed early childhood nutrition patterns inconsistent with Scandinavian diets, suggesting he may not have been born in the North at all. Historians turned to records of maritime trade in the Indian Ocean. Ancient Tamil inscriptions mentioned foreign visitors, described as tall, light-haired warriors who came from beyond the horizon. Could these have been Norse traders? Or was the flow of people in the other direction? Meanwhile, linguists analyzed the markings on the silver ring found in the grave. The symbols resembled a blend of Norse runes and Tamil Brahmi script, a hybrid writing system, or the remnants of a forgotten trade dialect. Piece by piece, the mystery deepened. The evidence didn't just hint at contact, it screamed of it. But no one had the full picture. Not yet. The definitive breakthrough came when the DNA sample was subjected to full genome sequencing using next-generation techniques. Scientists mapped not only the mitochondrial DNA, but also the Y chromosome and autosomal markers, allowing them to reconstruct the ancestry of the Viking warrior with unprecedented accuracy. What they found was astonishing. The maternal line traced directly to a Dravidian genetic cluster, most commonly found in southern India around 1,000 years ago. But it didn't stop there. Segments of his genome showed admixture, blended genetic input, from both Scandinavian and South Asian populations. This was no isolated incident of migration. This was evidence of intercontinental contact, possibly even integration. Further analysis revealed that this individual was likely second generation, his mother Indian, his father Scandinavian. He was born not in Sweden, but possibly in a port city along the western coast of India. Carbon isotope signatures in his bones suggested a tropical childhood diet, rich in rice, lentils, and spices. He had traveled, as a youth, across oceans, and died a warrior, in a foreign land. To add one final twist, radiocarbon dating of the burial aligned perfectly with a known period of Chola naval expansion, around 950 AD. At the same time, Norse records mention a mysterious influx of exotic goods, languages, and even servants of dark skin and golden rings arriving in trading posts. The DNA was no longer just a clue. It was proof, a real biological bridge between two ancient worlds. Picture the Indian Ocean, year 940 AD. The Chola Empire rules the waves, its fleets stretching from Sri Lanka to the Malay Peninsula. On one of these massive wooden ships, a vessel armed for both trade and conquest, a boy with copper-toned skin watches the horizon. Beside him, Norse traders, mercenaries, or perhaps captives, hired by Chola nobles for their strength and seafaring skill. It was not uncommon. South Indian rulers were known to recruit foreign expertise. The ship cuts westward, following the monsoon winds, past Arabia, through the Red Sea, then overland to the Mediterranean. But not all would stop there. Some, drawn by curiosity, profit, or exile, continued north, to the Baltic, to Burka. The boy grows, learns the Norse tongue, adopts their customs, perhaps even earns his place in battle. In time, he becomes not a foreigner, but a Viking. Yet his blood tells another story, one written in turmeric and spice, not snow and mead, or perhaps it happened in reverse. A Norse ship, Storm-tossed, lands on the Malabar coast. Its crew, presumed dead, is welcomed or enslaved by the Cholas. One survives, starts a family. His child, born of two worlds, carries that heritage back across the seas. 
No saga mentions it. No scroll preserves it. But in bones, in blood, the truth endured. A voyage forgotten by history, but remembered by the body. A link that defied maps and time. For centuries, history told us that oceans divided us. That cultures rose in isolation. That Vikings belonged to the cold north and the empires of India to the warm, spice-laden south. But now, with a single fragment of ancient DNA, that illusion is shattered. We are reminded that the past is never as simple as we believe, that beneath the surface of every accepted narrative lies a deeper, messier, and far more thrilling reality. This discovery forces us to ask, how many other forgotten connections lie buried beneath our feet? How many unnamed travelers, diplomats, warriors, and children of two worlds were lost to time? And how much of our global history is still waiting, encoded in the bones? Today, the link between India and the Vikings is more than just a curiosity. It's a symbol a reminder that the world was always more connected than we imagined, and that perhaps the real explorers of the ancient world weren't the ones who wrote the stories, but the ones whose stories were never told. If this mystery stirred your imagination, subscribe, leave a like, and share this journey with others who seek truth beneath the surface. And don't forget to watch our next episode where another ancient discovery challenges what we thought we knew about the past. The DNA doesn't lie. History is only beginning to remember.